This should be our wrap up video for this playlist. We should have everything complete by the end of this and most of the logic will take place in our widget blueprint menu. So if we go to the widgets folder and open the WBP underscore menu. Inside of the graph, there will be a couple of functions we need to create. So if we do that, first of all, we can add the variables that we need as we go along. And most of these are going to be the logic that we need to keep track of what the player is looking at what's selected and passing all of that information between the different classes. So the very first thing we want to do on the event construct to begin with is create some logic to get all of the information that we'll need to populate and update the buttons uh, because of course we're going to start with the most recent headpiece being shown so we need to immediately update the button to make sure it's displaying the right thing whether we can buy this equip it or purchase it for instance. So what we want to do first of all is get a reference to the game state and of course we're not doing any casting here so we can just get the interface function that we've made which is the get saved data and from this we can store the variables that we need. So we've got three bits of information we can use here but we'll only actually need two of them. So we can store a reference to the current funds. So we just promote this to a variable and call this current funds. And we'll do the same thing for the owned headpieces because this will be relevant to the uh, what the button displays based on what is currently owned. So we'll promote this to variable and we'll call this one currently owned pieces. Okay, so I've just added a couple of reroute nodes there to make this tidy, and we will need to add some extra functions here, but we actually need to flesh those functions out first of all. So if we go to the left-hand side and create a new function, the first one I want to do is the updating of the text that the select button shows. So I'm just gonna call this one update select button. This will be the first area that we need to create a couple of extra variables. The first one will be of type uh, headpiece cost, which is our structure. So we'll say new variable and we'll just call this one headpiece costs. And then we'll change the variable type to be the structure that we made in the previous video. So if you just type cost, it should be the only one which comes up. We've got the S headpiece cost and that is the correct type. And we're also going to want to store this as an int value. So we'll create a copy of the current funds and we'll just rename this one to be current headpiece cost. Okay, so if we control drag the headpiece cost into the graph, we can pull off of this and we can break this into its different variables. So this is going to give us access to what the values currently are for uh, none, hair, hair to, and hat. Based on this, we want to set the value of the current headpiece cost and we're going to do this with a select node. So pull off of here and get a select node. And to get the extra pins that we need here, we're going to control drag in the player currently selected headpiece, which is being updated when we move left and right through the options. We'll plug that in as the wildcard. And we now have all of our nodes so we can hook none, hair one, hair two, and hat to the corresponding options. So now when this is being updated in the buttons, we're gonna call this function. We'll find out what we're currently looking at in the currently selected headpiece. And we'll find the cost of that headpiece from the structure that we've pre-populated. And remember that we've populated this in the actual creation of the structure. So we don't need to do anything in here. Uh, even if we compile this, we have access to all of the costs readily available. So like I said, just kind of one less thing to hard code. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to check whether the currently owned headpiece is either available to wear or buy. So we're going to do a branch function here. We're going to get our array of currently owned pieces and we'll check if it contains something by doing a uh, contains node. So we'll see if it contains the item and the item we want to check for is the currently selected headpiece. So we'll just plug that in there, pass that in as the argument for the branch. And that will let us know if we currently own it or if it's available to be purchased still. Now with that done, we've only got a few more things to do in this function. We want to get the text button select. Uh, so we've got the text button select variable here. We've already made that a variable and we want to set the text of this. And we'll just set this to say equip. And just for reference to keep this updated, this is the text which will be just here. So I've updated the names of these. Uh, so this is going to be text button select. We'll also be working with a little bit later the text cost which is going to be this text variable here and the main thing is that these are all promoted to be an is variable in this window. So we'll do that first of all uh, because this means if this is returning true that we already have purchased the current item so we can just re-equip it. We also want to make sure that we get the button uh, buy and set this to be enabled. 
and we'll just tick this to make sure that this is true. And then finally, like I said, we're gonna get the text cost and we're just going to set this to be a null value so we don't have any text being displayed. So again, this is done with a set text. We'll fill that in and then we'll just make sure that we leave this to be empty. Now we can copy these because these are still the three things that we need and we'll just paste them down here. We'll plug this in from the false value. And the main difference is, is that if we haven't purchased this already, we want to change the text to say buy for the uh, text on the button. For the actual button itself, what we want to do is the Boolean is going to be a, a based on a simple query to see if we have the funds available to purchase it. So we're going to get the current funds, we're going to get the current cost of the headpiece, and we're gonna check if the current funds is more than or equal to the cost of the headpiece. Uh, and if it is, of course, we're gonna plug that in. So that will be our Boolean check. And that will just update. So it's gonna see if we have enough funds to buy the headpiece. If it's not, then it will disable it, which will just turn it gray so that we'll know that we can't actually use it. And if we do have enough money, then it will enable the button so we, it can be clicked. Then finally, with the text again, we're going to do this dynamically so we can just check some information about the current headpiece cost. We're going to set the text to be an integer. So we'll do a text to int conversion. We also want to convert this to a string. So we'll just do a quick conversion there and then append some information to this. And what we want to append, we actually want this to be the second argument. So we'll just unhook that and put it as the second argument. Uh, and we want to just update this to say cost with a double colon there and a small space so that the uh, monetary value will appear next to the colon. And then finally, we're going to just plug this in and this will do another conversion to our text. There's a lot of converting going on here uh, between different variable types, but that should be perfectly fine because we're only going to be calling this once or twice. It's not like a constant update or anything. But with that done, that is absolutely everything that we need to update the buttons. So if we make sure we don't forget this, we'll go straight back to the begin play or the construct. We'll drag this in. And as soon as we have constructed the menu, we're just gonna make sure that we update the buttons so that the first button that we have is displaying the correct thing. Now, the next thing we want to do is to update the funds text. So this is going to be based on the value we're getting from the save data. So we'll just call this function update funds text. And quite simply in here, we're going to get our text available funds and we want to set the text on this. So again, just because I've named this in between videos, the text for the current funds, this this one up here. So we're setting the uh, what what is being displayed here. So quite simply, again, we've already pulled this from our save data so we can use the current funds. We want to do a quick append. In fact, a lot of this is very simple, uh, very similar to what we had here. So I'm just going to copy all of this from our update select button and just paste that just here. And the only thing is we want to plug in the current funds to the two text here, and we'll just change the text that we're appending. So we're gonna say available funds. And then again, we'll leave a space after this so that we'll then show the monetary value that we have left. We'll plug that in because we've already have our conversions back to uh, string, uh, from string to text. And then I'll just leave it as so, so it's a little bit tidier. And again, so that we don't forget to actually implement this, we'll go straight back to the event graph. We'll just drag this in and we'll call this function as well. So now if we press play in the menu, what we should have is the funds being zero because I've reset the save. So I now have zero funds stored in my save, which is correct. If you remember, previously we had just hard coded this to display 200 just so we had an idea of how it would look um, and you'll also see as well that if we go through the buttons now uh, it just says equip now this is because of course we're not changing the button uh, display options when we press next or previous but because we're pressing start and we know that we already own none it's saying that we can equip none so that will follow through to the next level so what we want to do is we just want to reuse the update select button whenever we press next or previous so we can copy this twice and just hook this up every time we press this here so now that'll just run through all of the logic here just to check the current headpiece that we're showing update the button with the relevant information so we can now see that we can buy this because we don't own it but we cannot actually choose to purchase it because we don't have the funds available and then that's going to update as we go correctly okay so two more things we want to do in the graph here the first thing is we have had our button for quite a while to uh, proceed so the button proceed we want to update this with some logic uh, and this is quite simply going to be an open level. So we want to call the level that we need to open and we're gonna call the main level or main map. 
Okay, so that means that we ha now have that button done as well. And we'll go through to the main map. And of course, we're going to be wearing nothing because that's what we currently have. That would just leave us with one final button, which is the button buy. So we want to make sure that we have an on-clicked call here. And what we want to do is we want to take into account the current headpiece that we're looking at. Of course, we can only buy that headpiece if we have the cost anyway. So we're only going to be able to do this if we have the funds. So we want to take that funds off of the currently saved amount of funds that we have available to spend. And of course, unlock that headpiece. So the first thing we need to do is get the game state. And this is all going to be quite familiar. So again, we're going to use our interface function, which for this one is the headpiece selected or selected headpiece, sorry. And this is going to be passing in which headpiece is currently being displayed. So remember, we already have that value here, the uh, player currently selected headpiece. We also want to pass in the cost associated with this. Again, we have that from our update function, which is the current headpiece cost. Okay, so that is our first step. Now with that done, we have passed through the information, which means that if we could afford a headpiece, then we probably want to update all of the buttons and everything like that. So what we can actually do is we can come to the construct. We want to update the save data as well. So we want to get all of these uh, figures re-evaluated. So we can basically copy everything we had on the event construct down here so that when the button is pressed, we'll update the button again and the funds text. So all of this is kept in sync with the stored information. Now, because we're using the exact same information in two different places, this is one of those times it's probably best to collapse this into its own function. So what I'm gonna do is select all of this on the event construct. I'm gonna right click and collapse to function. And we'll just call this one something like update stored data. And then we can remove this. This was just a quick example to kind of make a point, drag in the update stored data. And that means that whenever we buy something now, uh, we can reuse that logic to update the buttons and the text again. So if we go in actually, there's a couple of things stopping us from checking this. Now, if we go to proceed to the next level to get our pickups, uh, you may have noticed if you've tried this, you have no input. So that's due to the way that I have set the player controllers up. In the main menu mode, of course, we're using the player controller that I've created, the controller, the menu controller. And inside of this, it's setting the input mode to be UI only and to show the cursor. Now, when you move between levels, that doesn't update. So we need to manually override this on any level that we want game control again. So what I'm gonna do is go to the game mode base and on the event begin play, I'm just gonna do something very similar. I'm going to get the player controller that we currently have, which because we're not overriding this, will just be a default game player controller. Uh, and all I want to do is set the input mode and we'll set this to be game only. And we also want to make sure that we remove the mouse cursor as well, because it just looks a little bit um, kind of half polished if the player needs to click into the window. So this will get rid of that requirement as well. So we'll do a show mouse cursor and set that to be false. Okay, so if we save that, that now means that we can go in, we can proceed to the main level and we can now look around, can pick up one of these. In fact, I'll pick up two. So I should have 400 funds added when I come back in. So we can see that the funds available is now 400. Uh, it means we can go through and buy some of the objects. Um, and in fact, I'm just gonna buy the hat because I know that that then will mean that I can't purchase these, uh, or at least I can't purchase the second one. So it shows that these are all updating correctly as well. So it now knows that we only have 100 funds left available. So all of that save data is updated as well. And one final thing that we need to do is I've made the selection that I'm wearing the hats that has been stored. But if we go to the player class, we haven't actually used that information yet. So I'm gonna go back to the blueprints folder, go to BP underscore player. And this is a very simple function again. So this will take a few seconds. We want to get our game state. And again, we're going to use the interface call of the get save data. Now, this is the same one that we used in the menu. The menu obviously didn't use one of the bits of information. And that is the bit which is the only thing our player class will need to know about. And that is the currently worn headpiece. It doesn't need to know about the funds or the owned headpieces. The player just needs to know what it's currently wearing. So we're going to set this to a variable or promote this to a variable. And we'll call this one currently worn headpiece. Off of here, we want to get our headpiece static mesh. We want to set static mesh. And we're going to set this to be uh, based on a select node again. So again, we don't need to update this manually. We can just do a simple select. We'll plug in the currently worn headpiece as the wildcard or the index. And then we're just going to set these now. So if we are currently wearing the head, uh, the none, then we'll leave that to be empty. If we're wearing hair one, then we'll set that to be hair one. Hair two, we'll set that to be hair two. And hat, we'll set that to be hat. So finally, if I come back in one more time, uh, we currently still have the hat in the menu now, which is correct. If we proceed, I'll have the hat in the main level. 
And if we go back around, we can go in now and buy the rest of the headpieces. So I can purchase the mohawk and our uh, tuft and then press proceed and we now have the tuft. So that is the character customization pretty much done. Uh, we can now toggle in and out of the different menus, equip the things, proceed around as you wish. So that pretty much finishes everything that we need to do. That is everything tidied up. Uh, I wanted to make uh, a mention, like I said, just making a point of reusing some code where the update stored data was kind of being used in multiple places because sometimes that just happens. Uh, and the best thing to do is just to tidy this up and neatly nest it away in its own little function. So that is now doing everything it needs to whenever we want to update the buttons or the text. So if you've enjoyed this playlist, of course, do consider subscribing to the channel. More content like this will be updated regularly. And do remember to hit the notification button to actually be given those updates so you know when that content is released. Uh, but with that done, hopefully this has proven useful. Like I said, I've kind of covered these in some very sort of core feature fundamental ways. I haven't gone into depth with things like eye customization, adding mouths and things like that. Because what I'd hoped is by the end of this, you can see that all you would need to do is make some different enums and potentially their cost structure collaboration. And that will give you some very customizable, easy to manage options for different features to add to the character. Now, the only thing which might vary a little bit, just in case people are interested, and I did kind of touch on this in the previous video, is if you wanted to add things like color schemes or sometimes as my character has some 3D objects as eyes. A lot of the times this might be mapped as a texture onto the face uh, for the eyes and the mouth, especially, especially if things are uh, animating and stuff like that. So rather than having these as static meshes that you're changing out, the only real difference is that you'll come in and you'll change either the material, which is applied to the face entirely, or have some clever way to change a texture parameter inside of that material. But apart from an extra step or two, you can still use very, very similar processes and uh, setups to quite dynamically change and expose that option to the player to change the eyes or the mouth, even if you have them set as textures or materials. You just need to change the, the core logic here where you're changing and setting the static mesh to change, like I said, the material or the texture. So I haven't gone into depth of those things, but I think hopefully by the end of this playlist, uh, you'll have the understanding of how to do the core setup and then just some quick Googling for the specifics of swapping out a texture in Unreal is all you need to do. So there's no kind of wholly unique or special or complex logic that you need to go through there. So I'll leave this video here. And like I said, that wraps up this playlist. I do hope you enjoyed this. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around that way it helps. And like I mentioned, do consider subscribing if you want to be kept up to date with future content coming from the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.